Well, this is an informal video on how to use the bone density machine, and we're going to start off in a couple parts. We're going to start with kind of how to set it up. So normally, again, when you take it to an event, it's probably going to be in this hard shell case. It does have some latches on here that have to be twisted. For example, it's usually like that, and you open it and twist it until it falls off. You can do that on both sides. You open it up on here, and if you want to come look in here, there is going to be the bone density machine, and then there should be a power cord. One thing that you maybe want to be aware of is how long that power cord is to uh, where you're going to be running the, the device. So again, it is fairly long, but we've had times where students have needed to take an extension cord because the, where the outlet to where they're going to be performing the test is longer than this cord. So you may want to definitely consider definitely having an extension cord with you. So the first thing we're going to do is go through the whole setup for the machine. So I'm going to take the machine out carefully. There is a handle on one side. You can just grab it from the bottom on the other. And I'm going to walk it over to a sink because the machine basically, uh, was it uses ultrasound, requires uh, two diaphragms to be filled up with warm water inside there. So there's water that needs to be in here. When you get the machine, I don't know whether water will be in it or not. So for this demonstration, I'm going to try to empty out any water that's in there and then we're gonna fill it up new. So I'll go through the process. So, uh, and again, you wanna come around on this side or be able to come closer. Mm -hmm. Let's take the pieces out of the machine to be able to fill it up with water. So the first thing I'm gonna pull back and lift off is the calf rest. So I'm gonna set that aside. Then you'll notice here there is kind of the footrest here that comes up and can be lifted off so i'm going to remove that as well inside here is usually what we call the phantom and it's used for doing the qa when you test the machine first so i'll set that to the side okay so now if you want to get a close-up of there there's a big black screw that needs to be unscrewed and that's where you add and remove the water from so it is kind of just a mechanical thing here so i've got this kind of funny shaped screwdriver just a big flathead screwdriver and we'll twist it a couple of times until it comes out. I'll remove the screw, fix it with that. And then this is the important part because this is about a $10,000 piece of equipment that you use by just holding it carefully and tilting it until all of the water drains out. I will say here, and both for this and when we go to put the water in, it does need to use distilled water. You wouldn't want to use tap water because of the calcium or mineral deposits can kind of uh, gunk up the machine a little bit. So we are only going to want to use distilled water. Now, part of the reasons that you might need to do this is if you get a QA failure where it says that uh, there is a problem with the water, is that the alcohol that we used when we spray the feet, when you'll see that in the process here in a little bit, sometimes alcohol can get down in here and it kind of affects the, the, the machine and then the water has to be replaced. So really, if the water has to be replaced, it's not a whole lot more difficult than doing that. Okay. So now the machine is empty, the screw is still off, so I'm going to add water. I need to fill it up at this point. If either the machine says there's not enough water in it or it does make you change the water, you dump the water out. And this is just uh, distilled water, so I've already filled this up with distilled water. You can use any container, but you'll notice to try to get it down into that little opening there, you may either want to have a funnel or, or something like this that's got some tubing on it, because all I'm going to do is put the tubing in here and hold it up like this. Let the water go in, and you just watch the water until it vis visibly comes up to the base of the threads. So you can see the water's kind of pouring into there. It takes a fair amount, usually having at least a gallon of distilled water. And again, if a little bit of water spills out on this part of it, it's okay. You don't want to obviously soak the machine, but it is that you're able to get it wet. And some of the water can come out if it happens to spill. Just try to minimize that. This also emphasizes why it's extremely important, A, that it's an expensive, sensitive device, but you never want to leave this machine out in a car or let it get too cold. That water could freeze inside the machine and that would be the end of the machine. So you do need to remember that there is water in the machine. So now if you want to kind of get a close up, you can kind of see where the water is now all the way up. I let it go all the way to the very top. So now I'm just going to take the screw, put it back into there. Tight, don't, you want to make sure it's tight, but you don't want to over tighten it or, or hurt those screws. So that's really all of the maintenance required as far as getting water in and out of the device. The only other important parts to this 
part that may require maintenance or may need to be changed during the actual testing process, if you want to come get a closer here, are the membranes on both sides. So I'm going to remove them so you can see the process for both of them. There is a, a plastic screw on here that has, make sure you can zoom in here, both a lock and an unlock. So these little screw threads to get them off, you're going to rotate it to that little triangle, lines up with the unlock here, that allows it to pull off, okay? It consists of a blue ring that is usually just kind of left inside the, of the plastic ring like that, and then this is kind of the little rubber diaphragm that needs to be replaced at certain times. If it develops a leak and you get a hole in there, you'll need to replace that. So you should definitely have at least two of these at a minimum kind of in your kit with you when you go on a, on a training party. So you'll notice if you kind of look through here, there's kind of some grooves here that the membrane has kind of a flat side here. The flat goes to the outside. The one with the little ribs here on the edges are going to go on the inside. And the way that you do it is usually starting at the bottom. You just kind of wrap the membrane on the bottom here and get the groove part onto the device like that. And sometimes when they're new, they're a little bit a little bit tighter, so you need to pull, start at the bottom and just kind of pull up. And make sure, though, that the outer edge here goes into that groove onto the black part there. So making sure that it looks nice and flat on there. Then you just need to replace the plastic rim. Again, I push the blue uh, ring back inside there. I'm going to start with the triangle, line up the triangle with the lock part. Again, looking down at the bottom to make sure I get it in straight. And sometimes it takes a little bit of practice to get it pushed in to where you can turn it. And it should turn all the way to where you feel a little bit of a snap and that triangle lines up again with the lock part there. So you'll want to visually inspect that both of those are on there okay, and uh, that's pretty much all of the um, maintenance that's required. So for now, uh, I'm gonna put the Phantom back into the little holder there. I'll take the foot rest. It's got two little clips that match up with the two little parts there. Lines up there, drops in like this. And then the calf rest has some little uh, slots here, and you'll notice there are two metal parts there, so you'll just start to kind of line those up so it goes into the groove, and then that pulls flat like that. All right, so the next step here would be to take the device and put it to where you're going to be running the test at. Now, the next thing, since I think this device is ready and I'm, uh, and I'm still not ready to do the patients yet, you're going to attach the power cord and then turn the machine on. The machine actually has to warm the water. So you can't run the QA or actually do your tests for about 10 minutes, maybe at the longest 10 to 15 minutes, depending, before you run the test. So you're gonna to wanna to get the water on, the membranes on, get everything in the machine ready to go, get it plugged in, that's how it's doing now. I'm gonna turn it into here. And if you wanna come get, let's get a close up look at this real quick. There is one other thing I didn't really kinda of go through, so let's do that well here you can come real quick what I'm about to do is plug push the plug in here and here's the power strip but it reminds me the only other kind of consumable that is used in this device is the paper for the patient reports or the printout so you might need to replace that often it doesn't have to be done a lot but there's this this little device here you pull this down and if you want to get a close-up on that real quick there are some instructions for trying to replace this thermal paper. So there's a roll of thermal paper that gets kind of wound up inside here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this down like this and I'll pull the paper out. Back out. You can see, so it's just a roll of paper that you'll replace in there. The problem with uh, thermal paper is that you have to get the right side going forward. So as you'll notice, I'm going to start it from the back and go up and through there. So to do that, there's this little roller here. to put this paper edge and use the green thing to kind of pull it up into there. And so there's the paper coming out there. And then you kind of push that back in, tighten it up. Roll this paper tight. Fits into the little two snappers there so that it's in there tight. But this was pushed back down, and again, you can continue to roll through there. You're going to want to roll a little bit of it out so that when you push this back on here, the paper comes out this little area, and then it just pulls off there. So that's how you could replace the paper on that. So now that all of that is ready to go, machine down here. It should be on a flat, level space. 
I've got that pushed on here. Come look over here on the screen so you can kind of see the screen when I first turn it on. So I'm just going to turn it on for a little bit. You can kind of see the little lights here. Okay, so you can tell since we first turned it on, this is a touch screen. The different options are on here but it already knows before we do any of those things that it's gonna to need to perform a quality assurance since we've just turned the machine on and uh, you'll have to do that before you run a test. Now you only have to do the quality assurance after the first, you know, the first thing when you use the machine. You do then don't want to turn the machine off or move the machine. If you turn the machine off or have to move it, then you're gonna to have to re-perform the QA. But once you turn it on, if you do the QA, then you're ready to and use it at that location without turning it off, you don't have to run the QA unless the machine has a, tells you to because of a poor read. So with that, we'll pause the video for now until we're ready to perform a test.